Welcome to Quiet Cat. Today, we're going to unbox and put together the full suspension Ridge Runner. The tools you'll need to assemble the Ridge Runner are a four millimeter Allen key, five millimeter Allen key, six millimeter Allen key, a pedal wrench or 15 millimeter open-ended wrench, a good pair of cable cutters for the zip ties, and if you have it available, a six Newton meter torque wrench for the handlebars and components. First thing you want to do, cut the tape, open up the box. It's packaged with these foam sheets, so we'll just kind of fold those up out of the way. And we'll start by removing the battery box. You'll find that inside. This contains your battery. Set that aside for now. Next thing you'll find deep inside is your saddle and seat post. Pull that out, we'll set that aside. And the last thing you'll find, typically all the way at the bottom, is your accessory box. It's gonna have your pedals and your battery charger. Once we've removed all that, we can then remove the bike from the box. The bike can be rather heavy, so sometimes it's best to get a partner to help you get it out of the box. First thing we want to do is install the saddle. Open up the quick release seat clamp, insert the seat post, so make sure that you're in the seat post enough so you can get a secure fit. Tighten the clamp, close it up, and make sure it's tight enough that we can lift the whole bike from the seat post. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our cutters and we're gonna very carefully remove all the zip ties that are holding on the foam. I recommend starting with the zip ties that are holding on the front wheel so that we can remove that safely. Once you have the front wheel removed, set it aside. We'll get to that later. Now we're gonna clip the remainder of the zip ties and remove the foam packaging. Next, we're gonna use our four millimeter Allen key, remove the stem clamp and loosely attach the handlebars. To attach the handlebars, we just want to place them roughly where they go. Don't worry about the angle or anything yet. We just want to get them on here. Align the stem bracket between the bracket that's holding on the analyst. This will help you get a centered spot for the bars. Again, don't worry too much about the alignment. We'll take care of that in the next step. Next, we're going to install the front wheel. Using your six millimeter Allen key, I'm going to remove the front axle. Coming in from the driver's side, I'm just going to spin this axle out. And once we have it loose, we can use our fingers pulling the axle out of there. Once you've removed the axle, now we're going to remove the disc pad spacer, which is a small plastic piece in between the disc brake pads. Align the front wheel with the disc rotor inside the caliper and move the hub up into place. The axle will slide right through to the other side until it grabs the threads. To secure the axle, use our six millimeter Allen key. Torque rating on this is 13 and a half Newton meters, which is snug, but don't over tighten. Next, we're gonna install the pedals. At the end of each pedal is an L or an R. They are specific to the left side and right side, and the threads are specific as well. Make sure that you're installing the right side pedal on the drive side of the bike, and the left side pedal on the non-drive side. When you've located the correct pedal for the side, start by simply threading in by hand. The pedal should thread in nice and easy with no resistance initially. If you're feeling resistance, stop, back it up, make sure you have the right thread. If you cross thread the crank, it can be a very costly repair. Using a pedal wrench or a 15 millimeter open-ended wrench, place the wrench on the pedal and tighten the rest of the way. The pedals will always tighten moving forward towards the front of the bike. So the right side pedal is traditional. The left side pedal is reverse threaded. The pedals should be snug and tight, but again, don't over tighten them as it can damage the crank, which can be a costly repair. Next thing we'll do while the bike is still in the air is install the battery. Locate the battery in the battery box. Carefully remove the battery from the packaging. And you will notice the battery has a click here and it has a plug here to insert into the bike. The battery comes in at an angle. Insert the bottom end in first and a 15 degree angle, insert the battery into the bike. You do not need the key to insert the battery to the bike frame. If you have the bike in a stand, now's the time to set it down onto the ground. With the bike on the ground, we can now adjust the handlebar angle. The handlebar has an up sweep and a back sweep. And what we want to do is ensure that the handlebars are parallel to the ground. Using your four millimeter Allen key, 
slightly loosen the bolts on the stem bracket that are holding the handlebars together. You just want it loose enough so that we can roll the handlebars forward and backward and get them into the right position. You may have to make an adjustment to the analyst display screen in order to get the desired roll. The correct point, the handlebar, is when the grip is parallel to the ground. Sometimes you have to get down on the side of the bike to see this. I like to kneel down and look straight across. Once we've found that spot, we're gonna tighten up the stem bracket. Just snug, don't over tighten this. If you have it available, a torque wrench is the best thing to use to make sure that the stem is at the correct tightness. Using a specific six Newton meter torque wrench for the handlebars, we're gonna fully secure the handlebar stem bracket bolts. At this point, we wanna make sure that all the connections are in the right place. During shipping and packaging, some of these can become disconnected. As you can see, we have a green and a yellow coming off the analyst, and we have a green and the yellow that appear loose down here. Very carefully, we wanna line these up and make sure that they're attached. Green to green, yellow to yellow. Once we have the bars in the right spot, we can now adjust the brake levers and the shift levers to the desired position. This is gonna be a position of comfort for the rider. A common mistake when adjusting the levers is over tightening the levers. We want these to be snug, but in the event of a crash, we want them to be able to move out of the way as opposed to brake. A broken brake lever can be a costly repair. We'll go ahead and turn on the bike to make sure that everything electrically is functioning properly. Once the screen comes on, you're good to go. In order to test the throttle, what I recommend doing is leaning the bike back on the kickstand. You may even place your foot on the kickstand to avoid it sliding. Lift the bike so that the rear wheel can rotate freely and simply push the throttle to ensure all the electronics are working. You can then grab the brake lever and very slowly squeeze the brake and stop the rear wheel. Repeat this process three or four times over to bed in the brakes. That way you get a nice snappy feel when you go out and ride. Assembly is complete. Thank you for watching the video. If you have any additional questions, visit our website at www.quietcat.com and welcome to the Quiet Cat family.